Hello Yellow class, welcome to your home learning for Friday. Let's go through what we're going to do today. So, start off with your speed sounds, so pause the video, have a go through your speed sounds, um, and then make sure you can do some out of order. I'm not going to go through the tricky words today because you're going to do those in a little while, but make sure you know those words. If you get a chance to go on phonics play, don't forget this week we are revising the long I sound. We've looked at the vowel trigraph, the I-G-H, which comes in the middle of words, and that's got activities on phase three. We've got the split vowel digraph, the I and the E that have been split apart by that naughty consonant, and there are activities on phase five for that. Then we've also looked at the IE, where they're still stuck together, and there are activities on phase five for that phoneme, and the Y making the I sound, there aren't any activities for. So we just leave that one, or you can enter your own words if you would like to. So today, have a go at practicing your spellings without looking at them, and see if you can maybe write some sentences with them in. Maybe somebody can give you a dictated sentence, and in your sentence is, can you get any of our long I words? Have a go at doing that. You've got spelling shed with all our long I activities. We've got our er suffix to add on the end. And there's also an activity for our common exception words for this week. Guided reading. So when we've done some reading, thinking about how we can explain to somebody else what has happened from what we've read. So what we know has happened from what we've read. So we're going to start today with the five times table. A bit more tricky this one. Are we ready? One five is, two fives are, three fives are, four fives are, five fives are, six fives are, seven fives are, eight fives are, nine fives are, ten fives are. When we look at the five times table, what we need to remember is they either end in a five or a zero. So we know that 26 isn't in the five times table because it ends in a six. Are you ready? Three fives. 15, well done. Seven fives, that's a tricky one. 35, well done. One five. Five. Oh, five fives. 25, well done. Have a go, see if you can recall some of those. So today, in your pack, you have got a copy of this game. This game is called Totality. Now you can play this in lots of different ways. The way that you're going to play it is you are going to need two counters. They don't need to be the little counters, you can use anything. You could use little models that you've got. It doesn't matter what you, you use. You'll need a piece of paper and a pencil because what you need to do is you will need to do a little bit of adding up as you're moving the counters. So what you'll have is you'll have another player so you will either need a brother or sister, or a mum or a dad that you can play along with. Let's check that that will go over the top. Oh yes, it will, lovely. So I'll do another one of those. We'll stick with two red ones. So what you do is you start off, you both put your counter on the board. Now often, somebody always wants to go in the middle. I'm going to get confused in a minute, aren't I, with two red ones. So you start on a number. The idea of totality is the first person to get to 21 is the winner. So if my count is in the middle, I'm on the number six at the moment. And what you do as you move your counter, you add up the numbers that you land on. So I'm on number six. I'm going to move first. I'm all oh, I'm going to come down here to number five. So I first of all, what I have to do, I have to do six, add five equals 11. Now the person I'm playing against, I can't remember where they are. Oh, they're on number five. Oh, now they can't, they're going to go to number three. So on their piece of paper, they will write down five, add three, and their total at the moment is eight. So at the moment, I've got 11. Oh, I'm going to go next to number four. So now I've got 11, add four, equals 15, or oh, my opponent's going to go to the number six. So let's see, so eight add six equals 14. And you carry on 
until somebody gets to 21 and then that person is the winner. You can play this in different ways. You can make the rule that you've got to start on the outside so that nobody can be on that number six. You could make the total bigger. You could do it that you've got to subtract from 21. There are lots of different ways you can play this game. You could make it that you can't go back on a number twice, because I could, technically, I've gone back to six. I didn't, but you could make that as a rule. Lots of rules that you can make up. There's a little game for you to play, and whilst you're playing, you're building up your mental maths and your quick addition. So make sure you have a go at that. So Chinese New Year is today. What we're going to do today in China, the colour red is a really lucky colour. And in your pack, you've got a piece of red paper. What I'd like you to do today is write little good luck messages or good fortune messages for people in your family. Now, you could write them. You could write lots of messages for the same person. You could think about people in your family and write each of them a different message. You could write messages for people that maybe you're not seeing in your family at the moment because of the lockdown, maybe for grandparents, maybe for cousins and things. So making sure that you're writing a message. So if I was going to write a message to somebody, or if somebody was poorly at the moment, you might write them, I hope you get well soon. Okay? So we're starting off with positive things. So we want things like, I hope, I wish. You're writing sort of things like that. So you're writing messages of good fortune and good luck to people in your families. Okay, so that's your English for today. And then we're going to get on with our handwriting. So again, we've got the word move, up, down, over, over, into our O, our V and our E. Prove, up, all the way down, round into our R, our O, our V and our E, improve, I, up, down, over, over, into the P, into the R, the O, the V and the E, and then we have got the word parents, up, all the way down into the P, the A, the R, the E, M, T and the S. Then you've got our word of the week activity for this week, and our word of the week is the word noise. Okay, so over here, we're practicing writing that letter N, and then we're going to practice writing the word noise over here, and you can probably write that one a few times because that's quite a short one. Now, what type of word is noise? Noise can be lots of different things. Noisy is an adjective when you talk about the noisy animal. So when we add the E suffix on the end, it becomes an adjective. Noise tends to be, it can be a noun, it's the name for something that's happening. You can also be noisy, but you can't, you don't noise, but you can be noisy and you can make a noise. So it's got different, um, different things that it can be. When it's noise, I would say noise is a noun, but we can turn it into adjectives and things when we add different suffixes. Think about what noisy means. So noise is sounds, it's very loud sounds, so have a look in Google, have a look in a dictionary if you've got one at home, and then have a go at writing the word with some suffixes on the end, and we can also write some um, compound words, like we can, you can have noise maker, okay, so that's a word, so that's a compound word there, because you've got noise and you've got maker put together, you can have noisily, noisily, okay, oh, don't need to cross the T there, that's an L, not a T. I'll put a picture of our Word of the Week display on the website so that you can have a look for that. So, Word of the Week is noise, PSHE today, we're thinking about keeping safe online. And what you've got today is you've got lots of different rules that are on there, that are rules that maybe you might have at home or rules that maybe you'd have at the park or online. And what you've got is you're going to sort those rules into things that you would do at the playground. So maybe there's a rule that's just for at the playground, like don't jump off the slide. There are rules maybe that are just for online, 
like oh, making sure you've got your parents' permission before you look at a website. And there are some that are both, like never talk to strangers. That's something we shouldn't do at the playground or on the computer. And I want you to have a look at where those different rules go. And so today's thinking about keeping safe online. I'll also put the e-safety charter on there and I've got a little, web, um, a little video about e-safety. So I'll attach that in case you want to watch that as well. And then today, again like you did on Tuesday, PE, make yourselves a little circuit, go around your circuit and keep yourself busy and see how many th things you can do in a minute and make sure you're getting physically active. Take care, have a good half term and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.